In the name of God, the holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. I've been thinking this week a good bit about liminal space. That space in between one thing and another. There's a technical sense that we use it in regard to liturgies and rites of passage. And if we're talking about the liminal space in a liturgy, it is that moment when the person undergoing the rite is no longer what they used to be, but they are not yet the thing they are becoming. <laughs> it's a liminal space. We use it in less technical senses sometimes about, I don't know, waiting rooms, airports, train stations, bus stations, where you're in a space where you're not where you used to be and you're not yet where you're going to be. And I usually point this out during Advent, which seems to be the most liminal of liturgical seasons. I'm going to point it out today because I believe that our life as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, as followers of the way, is by definition liminal. We are not who we used to be, and we are not yet the people we are becoming. And that's okay. It is not necessarily comfortable to not be this thing anymore and to not yet be the thing where you are. Most often, I guess, it occurs to me when we're doing the Eucharistic prayer and saying the memorial acclamation, Christ has died, Christ is risen, bam, we come to a stop right there because that's where we are, Christ will come again. We are between spaces. We don't always like that. I suspect Jesus knew that, and so he was praying for his disciples on the night before he died, praying for their protection, because he knew he was leaving them in this world, this world which doesn't play by the rules of the kingdom of God, this world which can be treacherous, which can be tumultuous, this world which can be wicked. And Jesus knows that his disciples aren't like that. They're different. They've been called out of the world. They've been called to live in a new way. They've been called to be examples. And the bad news, my friends, is that the same call is issued to us. <laughs> we don't get to coast. <laughs> we don't get to pretend that, oh, yay, heaven one day, and that's the end of it. We live here in a world that can be wicked and is tumultuous and is this world. But Jesus has called us to live in this world in a new way, to live in this world as people who have encountered the risen Christ, who look with hope to the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven. Y'all, it's a big deal. It's nothing to sneeze at. It's nothing to brush aside. It's nothing to pretend like it doesn't matter. We are called together into community and Jesus ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father is probably still praying this same prayer for us every day. Protect them. Protect them. Because where they are can be a scary place. Where they are can be an uncomfortable space. It ain't no fun sitting in the airport terminal <laughs> for hours and hours and ages and ages. Protect them. I think what strikes me about this prayer, and it is, it is the prayer for Jesus' disciples on the night before he died. It is the prayer for the community that would have been reading John's gospel toward the end of the first century. 
And it is the prayer for us who are walking through this world in these days and in these times. What strikes me about that prayer is just what Jesus thinks it's important to pray for. First, protect them. He also wants his joy to be complete in us. He wants us to be one as he and God the Father are one. And he wants us to be sanctified, made holy. Those are the three things that Jesus wants specifically for his disciples. Whether it's Peter and James and John and that lot, or whether it's whoever was reading the fourth gospel in the late first century, or whether it's all of us sitting here today, he wants those things. Protect them, make them one. That might be the hardest thing. We fall into the trap in this world of thinking that our faith is merely personal and certainly always private. It's between me and God. Bad news. That ain't what Jesus thought. <laughs> that ain't what the Apostle Paul thought. That is not what we've been called to. This unity is something, well, there, there you go. The idea of unity in itself doesn't make sense if it's just about me. I'm at one with myself. Con congratulations. <laughs> Yay. It's something that we do together as the body of Christ in this world as people who have been called to live differently in this world, to let that unity show, to let it leave a mark on us, to let Christ's love change us, be one. And Jesus wants his joy to be complete in us. He wants us to hold on to hope and hold on to joy, especially in difficult times, especially in this world which needs nothing more than to hear this good news, than to see people living lives that have been changed by the divine love that Jesus has for us and set loose in this world. Be joyful. Be joyful. Dance a little bit when we're singing holly, holly, holly. <laughs> Let your feet move. Let your spirits be light. Know that Jesus is still praying that prayer and making us joyful. Jesus wants to, us to be sanctified, to be made holy. That might be the hardest one. I know. Yeah, I don't always get it. You know, you usually, just as a general rule of thumb, you know, clergy people are the most irreverent people in the room. We just like, <laughs> we're not always holy and sanctified. None of us are. But the thing is, that's what Jesus wants. Jesus came into the world and sanctified himself so that we too might be sanctified in the world made holy, made holy. Notice I'm not using the active voice there as we make ourselves holy. <laughs> we are made holy by the Holy Spirit that has come into the world, by Christ's love for us that is set loose in the world. We are made holy. We're not using this Eucharistic prayer today, but my favorite one is prayer B, which remind us, reminds us that God has made us worthy to stand in the divine presence. We're not like Wayne and Garth from Saturday Night Live 30 years ago. We're not worthy, we're not worthy. We're not worthy in ourselves. Y'all, God has made us worthy. 
God has invited us into the holy space, into the tabernacle, into that space where God and Jesus and the Spirit and all of us are one. One. Each of us coming together from the various places that we come from intellectually and emotionally and geographically and liturgically and whatever other adverbs you want to use, we come from those various spaces and we come together and we stand in the presence of our Lord because we've been made worthy. We have been made holy. The door has been opened and all we got to do is step inside. The table has been set and all we got to do is come and sit down and eat. We are all one. All of us. One. And I am thankful that that doesn't mean that we're all the same. Unity does not mean uniformity. Unity means that we are connected in our being and that God's holiness shines out in this world from a myriad of personalities, a myriad of people, a host of perspectives. But the thing is, Jesus prays that we will all be one. And thanks be to God. That's who we are. Amen.